Find the maximum power that can be delivered to the resistor R in this bridge circuit. Very recently, I posted a video deriving the general formula for maximum power transfer. But let's apply it on a real problem this time. To find the maximum power transfer, the first step is to find the Thevenin equivalent of the circuit. But the first question that comes to mind, the Thevenin equivalent with respect to which pair of terminals? Well, we'll detach the resistor R and replace it with a pair of open terminals A and B, like this. And then we want to find the Thevenin equivalent of this entire circuit with respect to terminals A and B, and then we'll connect the resistor back. Okay, so we want to find the Thevenin voltage and the Thevenin resistance. The Thevenin voltage is this open circuit voltage VAB. But this seems a little tricky. Usually the terminals A and B are on the edge of the circuit, but this time they're like floating around in the middle. So how does this change things? It's actually simple. VAB is the potential difference between points A and B. So we'll find the voltage at A, as in the potential difference between A and ground, the voltage at B, the potential difference between B and ground, and then we'll subtract both. This will give us VAB, which is the Thevenin voltage we're aiming to get. Which circuit analysis technique shall we use? Mesh analysis? Nodal analysis? Well, I'll use something a little bit different. You can think of it as nodal, in a way. But what I want to do is find the equivalent resistance of this entire circuit, and then divide the source voltage by it, giving me the total current. And then I'll trace the potential drop throughout the circuit. Let me show you what I mean. We have this current I entering the circuit, and this current is 60, which is the voltage source, divided by the equivalent resistance with respect to this voltage source. What is this equivalent resistance? Well, we have a path of 10 plus 20 and a path of 25 plus 5 ohms. So this equivalent resistance is 10 plus 20 in parallel with 25 plus 5. Can you see it? OK, this will be 30 in parallel with 30, which is 15 ohms. So the current going into the circuit is 60 over 15, or 4 amperes. Good. So this 4 amperes will split evenly. 2 amperes will go through this 30 ohm branch, and another 2 amperes will go through the other 30 ohm branch. OK, how does this help us find VAB? Well, notice that the potential at point A is just this potential drop through the 10 ohm resistor away from the 60 volts, meaning that VA will be 60, the voltage supply, minus the voltage drop through the 10 ohm resistor, so that'll be 10 times 2 by Ohm's law. VB, on the other hand, will be 60 minus the voltage drop in the 25 ohm resistor, so 60 minus 25 times 2. Remember that the current through both resistors is the same, due to the even split. So, VA will be 60 minus 20, which is 40 volts, and VB will be 60 minus 50, which is 10 volts. So, VAB is the difference between those two voltages, and that will be 40 minus 10, which is 30 volts. So this is the Thevenin voltage since it's the open circuit voltage between terminals A and B. So that's the Thevenin voltage done. Let's now turn our attention to the Thevenin resistance. To find the Thevenin resistance, we can look into terminals A and B and find the equivalent resistance from there. So we can say R Thevenin is equal to RAB. But I'm not going to do this method. In fact, I'm going to leave it as a challenge for you. Can you find the resistance looking into terminals A and B in this circuit? Let me know what you get in the comments down below. But the method I want to present is something I haven't done before, I believe, which is finding R Thevenin by dividing V Thevenin by I short circuit. 
which is the current going through a short between terminals A and B. Okay, how can we find I short circuit then? This time I'll use nodal analysis. I want to be versatile and present as many circuit analysis techniques as possible so that this video is as instructive as it can be. I'm gonna call this node A, this node B, this is our ground, and let's get started. How will the current split? At the top node, it'll split like this, the current through the 10 ohm resistor and the current through the 25 ohm resistor. And then at node A, we see that I short circuit goes to node B, and then this current goes down through the 20 ohm resistor. From node B, I short circuit comes in, and out comes this current through the 5 ohm resistor. So these are my assumed directions. So let's get started writing the node equations. At node A, we have the current entering is 60, the top node, minus VA over 10. We have I short circuit leaving, and we also have VA minus 0 over 20. Let's clear the denominators by multiplying everything by 20. So this is the equation at node A. We can move negative 2A to the other side. And we have 20 I short circuit plus 3VA equals 120. Good. At node B, we have 60 minus VB over 25. That's the current entering. I short circuit is also entering. And we have VB minus 0 over 5 leaving. Again, we'll simplify this equation by multiplying everything by 25. And this is the resulting equation we get. So we have two equations, but three unknowns. I short circuit, VA, and VB. Actually, there are only two unknowns. Because notice that point A is directly connected to point B through a wire. Meaning, they're at the same potential. I only call them something different to make it easy for you guys to follow along with me when I was writing the equations. But VA is precisely VB, so there's no need for this additional labeling. So we now have two equations in I short circuit and VA. Now this is not your typical nodal analysis method because usually we have simultaneous equations in voltages, not a mix between a voltage and a current. But I don't care, it still works. You can solve these two equations simultaneously and get I short circuit equals 36 over 13 amperes. And now we can find R7 by dividing 30 by 36 over 13. So this becomes 30 times 13 over 36. We can divide the top and bottom by 6. So that will be 5 times 13 over 6, which is 65 over 6 ohms. So this is the Thevenin voltage and the Thevenin resistance of the original bridge circuit we started with, with respect to terminals A and B, which are the pair of terminals to which the resistor R is attached. Remember? Okay, how can this allow us to find the maximum power transferred to the resistor R? Remember in my derivation video, the resistance must be exactly equal to the Thevenin resistance of the circuit. So R must be equal to this 65 over 6 ohms. And then, the maximum power delivered to the resistor, remember the formula? The square of the Thevenin voltage divided by 4 times the resistance. So this will be 30 squared over 4 times 65 over 6. We can simplify into 2 and 3 instead of 4 and 6. We can bring the 3 to the numerator. 30 squared is 900 times 3 is 2700. 2 times 65 is 130 and now we can cancel a 0 from the top and bottom and that's 270 over 13 watts. And now, and only now, let's represent this result in a decimal because we have no more work to do so no rounding error will result. This is approximately 20.77 watts, and this is the maximum power that can be delivered to the resistor R in the bridge circuit we started with. 